Hi, my name is Stephen Deeks. I'm one of the uh, co-organizers of the upcoming Long COVID uh, Keystone meeting, which is going to be the first opportunity, I think, for um, a lot of scientists now working on COVID, Long COVID to get together to discuss what's happening in the science, what's happening in the clinic and so forth. Um, the meeting will be in uh, Santa Fe, beautiful town, at the end of August this year. This is um, going to be a unique meeting. This is going to be, I think, the first time that scientists who, who will become engaged in the study and the treatment of long COVID will have a chance to get together. And, and so my vision, our vision, um, has been largely to bring people together into the same room um, to discuss what's happening scientifically, to get to know each other, um, uh, and to begin to build collaborations. And, and so we're going to have experts from the community because um, really it's been the community advocates that really started this whole process and have shepherded it through over the last couple of years. Um, some of the key funders, uh, basic scientists, uh, epidemiologists, uh, clinical trialists, um, industry, academics, so forth, um, to really bring sort of all the major stakeholders in the one place at the same time. Uh, I think at this meeting, for the first time, we'll have multiple basic scientists and some clinical scientists who are working in the recovery initiative to come together to meet each other in person for the first time and begin to share um, uh, their progress. I do believe that in order for us to um, leverage the recover initiative, particularly the cohorts, it's absolutely essential that scientists and epidemiologists and clinicians get to know each other the clinicians need to feed the questions to the basic scientists and so forth. Basic scientists need to realize what kind of wealth of biologic and clinical data is available in Recover so they can begin to use this. I just don't think that that's going to happen through Zoom calls um, or through web-based portals. I think we have got to get people into the same room um, to begin to figure out what to do next. We're going to have all these great speakers. They're going to give um, formal presentations of the research. But I think the real strength of an in-person meeting like this um, will be the discussions that will happen in front of the posters. And probably the best part of this whole meeting will be the discussions that's going to be having over meals, uh, in hallways and so forth, as we get to sort of learn what each of us um, can do and should be doing and how best to work together. You know, I expect the, the major scientific outcomes from this meeting will be sort of, a, I think, more of a consensus on, on on, on what the big questions are, um, maybe even a bit on what the answers are. Uh, hopefully the field is getting closer to a um, universally accepted definition of the clinical syndrome um, uh, of long COVID. Um, hopefully the field will begin to learn what characteristics of long COVID are shared with other post-infectious complications and how the work in the post-infectious complications can inform long COVID and vice versa. Um, man, I expect that we're going to hear a lot of exciting data regarding the role of, you know, virus persistence, immune dysfunction, inflammation, coagulation, so forth as potential causes. Um, I think that the field is now uh, witnessing the emergence of really, for the first time, I think really high quality uh, uh, basic science and translational science as it pertains to the biology of long COVID. Um, if the virus persists, what's it doing? There's some emerging evidence that, that coagulopathy, clotting is a problem, uh, chronic inflammation, um, uh, the development of autoantibodies, autoimmunity. I mean, there's multiple uh, mechanisms uh, at play here. that are not mutually exclusive. In fact, our group thinks that one leads to the other, leads to the other, leads to clinical disease and so forth. So I think that's where the state of the, of the science is in terms of the cause of these post-infectious complications, particularly long COVID. Where we're going over the next year or two, I think is um, uh, we're transitioning into an area of what I refer to as experimental medicine, essentially where we're gonna be using um, various different medications or interventions as probes to um, begin to figure out which of these pathways are really critical uh, to the cause of long COVID. Um, and also to begin to figure out uh, where we should be investing in terms of the big, large, upcoming, uh, um, more proof of concept, uh, randomized clinical trials to try to figure out how to make people feel better. Um, I've been to a Keystone at Santa Fe. It's, it's my um, 
personal favorite in terms of the menus that I've experienced because I've been going to Keystones for 20 years now. Um, so I think people should expect to, to um, have a lot of friendly discussions in a wonderful environment at a great time of the year.